Welcome to Corpus Christi Roman Catholic Church in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania for the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Welcome. And we are grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us via live streaming to offer ourselves to the Lord and encounter Him in the sacred liturgy. As we prepare ourselves to be united through Him, with Him, and in Him, in praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God, for it is truly right and just, let us prayerfully anticipate entering these sacred mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as we approach the celebration of the Paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we come as one sick to the physician of life, as one unclean to the fountain of mercy, as one blind to the light of eternal brightness, as one poor and needy to the Lord of heaven and earth. So I ask you, most generous Lord, graciously heal my infirmity, wash me clean, illumine my blindness, enrich my poverty, and clothe my nakedness. May I receive the bread of angels, the King of kings and Lord of lords, with such reverence and humility, such contrition and devotion, such purity and faith, and such resolve and determination as may secure my soul's salvation. Grant, most kind God, that I may receive the body of your only begotten Son in such a way that I may become a loving part of his mystical body and counted among his members. O oh, most loving Father, grant me your beloved Son. While on this earthly pilgrimage, I receive him under the veil of this sacrament, so may I come at last to see him face to face for all eternity. For he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.
us pray. O God, who have accomplished the work of human redemption through the paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ may experience continued increase of your saving grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was following the 12th. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord.
Lectura del apóstol San Pablo a los Gálatas. Hermanos, Cristo nos ha liberado para que seamos libres. Conserven, pues, la libertad y no se sometan de nuevo al yugo de la esclavitud. Su vocación, hermanos, es la libertad. Pero cuiden de no tomarla como pretexto para satisfacer su egoísmo. Antes bien, háganse servidores unos a los otros por amor. Porque toda la ley se resume en un solo precepto. Amarás a tu prójimo como a ti mismo. Pues si ustedes se muerden unos y devoran mutuamente, acabarán por destruirse. Los exhorto, pues, a que vivan de acuerdo con las exigencias del Espíritu. Así no se dejarán arrastrar por el desorden egoísta del hombre. Este desorden está en contra del Espíritu de Dios. Y el Espíritu está en contra de ese desorden. Y esta opción es tan radical que les impide a ustedes hacer lo que querían hacer. Pero si los guía el Espíritu, ya no están ustedes bajo el dominio de la ley. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. in my heart. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, 
follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Wolf, parishioners who served on the various committees for the Narthex project, those who worked directly on the construction, design, and building, and the parish family of Corpus Christi, all the family members, congratulations. What a beautiful, let's <laughs> applaud your Just having adjusted the microphone, I see the big letters here. Do not touch microphone. I'm sorry, <laughs> Father Wolf. I, <laughs> I only saw it afterwards. <clears throat> so, but what a wonderful joy. How good God is who joins us together this afternoon to celebrate the completion of this beautiful edition. What a privilege it was for me to be handed the key and to open wide the doors of the new annex, your theme coming from St. Pope John Paul II. It is the Eucharist under which title you are a parish family, Corpus Christi, that unites us and binds us as one family in Christ's mystical body. What a reminder you have whenever you think of the name of your parish of the presence of our Eucharistic Lord. As we began last Sunday on the Feast of Corpus Christi, this three-year program of Eucharistic revival, we need to revive the absolute amazement that should be in every one of our hearts as we stand before our Eucharistic Lord and this gift of himself to us. And I thank everyone who was a part of this beautiful project to add this dimension to your parish family, or this gathering space, um, this beautiful entrance to the church. You know, the, the ritual, before I sprinkled the narthex, it called for me to sprinkle the people. And I thought the Lord had taken care of that himself. <laughs> so I didn't sprinkle you again. The waters from heaven, uh, I think, provided sufficiently for that. But let that rain as it fell down upon us remind us of the abundance of grace, the love of God that showers us every moment of every day. So congratulations and what a joy it is to be together to celebrate this uh, new chapter, this uh, addition, this new dimension to the facilities here. But it's not just uh, stone and glass and mortar. Uh, it represents the work of your hands, your generosity, your willingness to sacrifice, and the needs, as Father Wolf said, beginning uh, with uh, to, to honor the past and to uh, look to the future generations who will enjoy and profit by this addition. You know, Father Rodriguez, it only seems like yesterday that you and your your uh, team came before the, my, myself and the, the College of Consultants with the concept 
We, we need to do this. this. This is necessary for our parish. And for me, having been at a distance, it seems only like yesterday. Those of you who lived through this day by day, certainly you saw the, the incremental progress of, of this as it unfolded. Um, and so uh, God has been good. And thank you for your generosity and the unity that allows projects such as this to be a success through your parish family. Let's take a look at that gospel that was just proclaimed because it's quite relevant to this idea of opening the doors to Christ and making, first of all, being genuine disciples and then being sent to make disciples for Christ. That is the church's mission, to evangelize, to let the gospel come out from us, our actions and our words, so that others will be attracted to follow Christ as we ourselves, by his grace, follow him. Did you notice how this gospel began? This, this begins a 10-chapter long section of St. Luke's gospel, the, a very important central part of the gospel. And Luke began it by saying, when the days for Christ to be taken up were fulfilled, that's a very important opening sentence. He wants to alert us that what happens now on this journey to Jerusalem, what has been happening before it and what will happen in Jerusalem, are not just the unfolding of circumstances. Nothing's happening here by happenstance. Rather, this is the unfolding of a divine plan. When the days were fulfilled, for Christ to be taken up. He's being taken up to Jerusalem as they walk along this long journey, but in the sense that being taken up is referring already subtly to his Paschal mystery. When in Jerusalem, outside the city walls, he will be taken up on the cross, and then taken up in resurrection, and taken up in ascension. That's what lies ahead in his destiny to Jerusalem. And on that road, he meets several different people who either themselves say they want to follow him or he invites them directly, follow me. Let's look at the four groups that Luke presented in these early part of the journey to Jerusalem. The first two, I think we could consider to be fanatics. Fanatics because the brothers, whose nicknames were Sons of Thunder, James and John, were so angry at those Samaritans that they wanted Jesus' permission to call down fire from heaven to destroy the people who would not offer him hospitality. They're the first ones traveling with Jesus. They've been around him for some time. Now, how in the world they thought they had the power to call down fire from heaven is another story. But nevertheless, they were so trapped by their anger that they could not open the doors to Christ. They only sought revenge. Let's get even with these people who snubbed us. And our Lord did not come to destroy his enemies. You never see him doing that. He urges those who oppose him, those who won't receive him, to reconsider. He proposes the divine truths to them, but not to destroy them to invite them to conversion. And so he refuses this offer, the sons of thunder, because their doors are closed to his love, a Christ-like love toward even those who are his enemies. The second was someone who said, I'll follow you wherever you go. A perfect example of being absolutely naive he didn't know what lay ahead on that journey to Jerusalem. He just blindly said, I'll walk along with you. I'll go wherever you go without any idea of what that would entail. Fully naive, innocent about what discipleship would demand if he really did walk with Jesus. The other two seem to make reasonable demands let me first go bury my father. Let me first go say goodbye to my family. 
Uh, who wouldn't say yes to that? Uh, Jesus. <laughs> he didn't say yes because he didn't sugarcoat. He didn't try to soft pedal what it means to be a disciple. And so we don't know whether the man's father was dead. Maybe he was just having a headache or a bad day that day, but someday he was going to die, and then when my father dies, I'll come and follow you. Or let me go home. Well, if I stay a couple of days with my family. No, nothing can take priority over following Jesus. This is what Luke wants us to know by telling us these encounters that our Lord has. Discipleship must be a priority to be genuine, to be honest, to be convincing. These are examples of people who did not open the doors of their hearts, of their lives to Christ. They put something first. I will, but I'm a disciple, however. This is very, very challenging for us. And once again, I go back to the title of your parish family, the body of Christ. Christ has enabled us by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the sanctifying grace that comes into our souls, and by the very body and blood of our Savior that is our food and drink, to be able to deliver what discipleship requires, to be able to understand the demands and to be willing to pay the high cost. This is the gospel that's placed before us this afternoon. And let us thank God that he has baptized us, that we have received the seal of God the Holy Spirit and that we're nourished as often as we choose to be nourished by the body and blood of our Savior. He's given us everything we need to meet these high demands. Es un gran ale alegría para mí estar aquí en Corpus Christi esta tarde para celebrar la finalización de este proyecto y pedir la bendición de Dios para su nuevo trabajo y para esta familia parroquial. Este nartex es un signo de la unidad y dedicación de sus parroquias y será un gran adición en el trabajo de crecer como discípulos de Cristo y cumplir la misión de hacer discípulos para Cristo. En el evangelio de hoy, Nuestra Señor enseña el alto costo de ser su discípulo. Se encontró con varias personas en el camino que quiera, querían seguirlo, pero no podrían abrir la puerta a Cristo. Cada una tenía barreras que las impedían seguir. No eran libres. En la segunda lectura, San Pablo escribió, Por la libertad, Cristo nos ha hecho libres. La libertad es uno de nuestros conceptos más preciados. Pero hoy para tanta gente, la libertad significa hacer lo que, que quiera. Significa que el individuo tome decisiones al margen de cualquier autoridad. Libertad significa que mis elecciones están más allá del juicio, deben ser respetados por todos. ¿Es esto lo que quiso decir San Pablo? Quiso decir que cada uno de nosotros puede hacer la suya para realizar de la, de la manera que queramos? Ciertamente no. La idea de libertad de San Pablo es muy diferente. Nos está diciendo que no solo somos libres de ciertas restricciones, sino que somos libres para el servicio a Cristo y a los demás. 
el gran enemigo de la libertad cristiana es el egoísmo humano que impide que el poder del Espíritu Santo obre en nosotros y a través de nosotros. Ser adicto a nuestra propia voluntad y una sentencia de muerte. En el Evangelio de hoy, Jesús tiene muy claro que ser discípulo es exigente y exige obediencia, fidelidad, virtud y santidad. Solo por nuestra pertenencia a Cristo en la iglesia y por la participación en la Eucaristía podemos formar, formarnos como discípulos y conocer el verdadero sentido de la libertad humana. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let us make our prayers of intercession as part of our pilgrimage of faith, following Christ to that eternal Jerusalem, our promised inheritance and our response will be sung. For unity and peace within the Catholic Church on earth, even as our world seems more divided. Let us pray to the Lord. For true liberty among the different peoples and nations of the world, let us pray to the Lord.
for those who make weak excuses to escape the demands of faith in God. Let us pray to the Lord. For courage and faithfulness in following our Master, Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Señor, For our parish, as we dedicate our new narthex this weekend, that we may continue the work begun by our parish ancestors seeking to know Jesus, love Jesus, and follow Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. that the sick, suffering, recovering, and dying may find strength and healing of spirit in our hope, that is Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to God for the recent Supreme Court decision that allows legislators to enact laws that will protect the dignity of human life, even in the womb, and for all who, those who find this ruling so troublesome that they, may, that they may grow in their understanding that human life is God's first gift, let us pray to the Lord. For the eternal salvation of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions in our book, and for those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Señor, Señor, Padre de amor y ternura, tú que nos das el pan nuestro de cada día, escucha nuestras oraciones por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Señor, al celebrar el memorial de nuestra salvación, imploramos humildemente tu clemencia a fin de que este sacramento de amor sea para nosotros signo de unidad y vínculo de caridad. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Amén. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Thank you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pope John Paul II, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ be with you, Richard. Peace of Christ with you, Andrew. Peace with you. Congratulations, Alan. Still peace, peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of Christ with you. Peace of Christ with you. Christ with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. This crucifix has been donated to the parish for use in the narthex by the Guatemalan community of Corpus Christi. The title is of the Lord is the patron of Guatemala, Señor de las Esquipulas. It is my privilege to bless it before it is placed in the narthex as a constant reminder of the sacrifice of our Lord by which we have salvation. Oremos. Señor Padre Santo, que quiste que la cruz de tu Hijo fuera la fuente de toda bendición y el origen de todos tus beneficios, atiende generosa a nuestras súplicas, ya que hemos alzado esta cruz como un testimonio de nuestra fe, y concédenos que viviendo aquí en la tierra, unidos siempre al misterio de la pasión de Cristo, alencemos el gozo eterno de la res resurrección. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. You may be seated. As we conclude this mass of thanksgiving to Almighty God for his abundant blessings, this Eucharist, our prayer of thanksgiving, it's also appropriate. So please allow me to give some personal and specific thanks. First of all, Bishop Gaynor, thank you so much for blessing us with your presence and blessing our new narthex as we open wide the doors to Christ. Our Chief Shepherd, we appreciate your support along this process and as we continue to go forward. Please keep us always in your prayers. Thanks to Father Luis Rodriguez for the leadership and the vision years ago, shortly after you arrived, to begin a process raising money through a capital campaign and a four-year process to continue developing the resources here so that we could be more a more vibrant Catholic community. And Father Rodriguez, in this process that began a little more than a year ago when Bishop was with us for groundbreaking, 
I felt like I was a little boy on Christmas Day. My mother and father know I like big trucks, and mom and dad are here today. And so it was a joy watching brick by brick, trench by trench being dug, every little element. And it was beautifully and exquisitely done with your leadership. So thank you, Father Rodriguez. You witnessed the ceremonial passing on of the key to Bishop Gaynor, who opened the doors for us. That was done by Lauren Bennett of Norco and Hall Architects. She came up with a tremendously beautiful design that incorporated beautiful elements of our historic church and yet wide space to receive people well. Lauren and your firm, thank you so much as well. Thank you to Breckville and Hellman, the general contractors who coordinated the process and were so very, very cooperative in working with us, meeting with us every two weeks, keeping us updated and adjusting where we wanted adjustments. This experience, this process makes it very clear how it takes everyone's gifts and talents, their specific ability to bring together a beautiful work. Let me name just a few of our wonderful subcontractors who our general contractor included so that the building that we have is the beauty that we now will use. J.D. Wagner, our excavators, Ralph E. Talbert, the, the masons, Rittner Steel and Hudson Welding, Ladies Custom Woodworking, Dependable Roofing, Epiphany Studios, Stained Glass Windows, Precision Tile Works, Jeffrey Davis Painting and Wallpapering, Regional Fire Protection, France Plumbing, Environmental Comfort, and Frank B. Lesher Electric. And that's only some of the general subcontractors who helped to bring this building together. But of course, we know it's for mission, not as a monument to anyone. And so as we are thankful to those who helped bring this building to this point, it's now incumbent upon us to use it and use it well to become better disciples of Jesus. I thank all those who helped us arrive at celebrating today because it didn't happen by itself. I'm tremendously grateful to Rob Mills, the parish council president who coordinated the ad hoc committee to coordinate and all the members of that committee to Jim Case and our sacred choir, Carlos Espinosa and his family who provided our Spanish music, to those who provided the beautiful flowers both here in the church, in the narthex and on the grounds, to those who served on Father Rodriguez and then my capital campaign committee, the building committee and all the other elements that were put together to support us in this process. I need, and I'm grateful also to my staff, to Father Richard Lyons, who was here when I arrived, Father St. Andrew Hilaire, who was here for a bulk of my time, and now Father Matthew Smith. Bishop, I hope you don't think that I can't keep parochial vicars. <laughs> but among my staff, I need to make special acknowledgement of one. And that is Renee Galvin and her husband, Oscar. Oscar served as... <laughs> Oscar served as the liaison between the parish and the general contractor, and Renee did everything that was necessary, from weeding the new flower beds to writing permits for the city for all the different things they needed building code compliance. Thank you so much, Renee and Oscar. To everyone else, I can't name everyone, but this is a tremendous day, but it's the beginning to go forward. And let me also mention one other who is on the uh, building committee, our dearly beloved Bob Renicki. He so much wanted to be here to see this, and he saw much of the progress, but hasn't made it to the end. But Terry, no, we are grateful. We love him and we love you and are grateful for the sacrifices he and you have made. Father Wolf, just let me thank you for your kind words. And it is my joy and a true blessing to gather with you to celebrate 
of this wonderful accomplishment. You know, it's not always that something that is so practical and useful turns out to be so beautiful. Uh, and, and you've certainly achieved that combination and uh, much to the credit of the architects and, and also to the contractors and to your uh, over uh, supervision, uh, uh, guidance of, of the project. So both Father Rodriguez, Father Wolf, I, I thank you both and most especially again to the parish family, congratulations. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who helped in the preparation and celebration of our Mass of Thanksgiving this afternoon. Beautiful choirs, both uh, thank you for leading us beautifully in uh, our sung hymns, our sung prayer, uh, our Knights of Columbus, the St. Michael's Guard, and our other parish um, uh, servers, the other liturgical ministers who assisted, uh, our two deacons, and uh, Tom Lauer, the Master of Ceremonies. And it's especially wonderful to see the turnout of my brother priest to be here and, and shows certainly their affection for uh, Corpus Christi Parish, those who have served here, those who are nearby, uh, to come to join you in this very festive celebration. So thank you all, and I look forward to seeing you af after the Mass. Do you want my mic? <laughs> Don't adjust the uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it says don't touch, <laughs> don't touch. Yes. Bishops can do what they want. <laughs> and Bishop, this is not my chance to get the last word. <laughs> but I forgot two important things. Besides the tremendous generosity that has brought us to this point, our legacy benefactor has given us the opportunity for a matching grant. So you know we still have phase four to do, the improvement, the renovation, not renovation, but upgrading, painting, new lights here in the church. And so up to $300,000, every new commitment, this person will match dollar for dollar. So much is this person committed to the work of the parish of sharing Jesus with everyone. So we're not asking you to give more, but if you're inspired by her, this person's generosity, especially getting more families who have not yet participated in our capital campaign, this is the opportunity. Our celebration hasn't ended. We now have food and chance to meet and talk with one another, friends, new and old, a chance to talk with the priests who have traveled to be with us. There is food under the tent, so please head in that direction. It has stopped raining. The blessing occurred at the beginning. We're now ready to eat and socialize. You're also welcome then to take the food. Either there's chairs and tables at the tent. You can bring it back into the narthex. You can explore the courtyard between the narthex and the church. Or if you want to go over to the school or the gymnasium. We continue to celebrate now with food and friendship. Thank you, Bishop. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Come in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael the, archangel, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be, be our protection, protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking souls. Amen.